Good morning. Welcome to Let's Get Growing Facebook Live. Finally our first episode for 2023. We should be back now on a pretty regular basis every Sunday. Uh, we try to get every Sunday in. We can do most of them, so stay tuned. We're going to take you through the whole gardening year. Got lots of fun stuff to do. Lots of projects to get going. Um, because we're started a week later than I had hoped, uh, we're going to have to cram a lot of stuff into the next couple of weeks, but that's fine. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to follow up something from uh, December, and then we're going to talk a little bit about something new that we're going to try this year, um, and then after that we'll start to get into all kinds of great stuff over the next few weeks because there's lots and lots to do for the garden at this time of the year, uh, whether you think it's uh, you know time to do nothing or not. Uh, it is time to start planning ahead and getting things uh, going. So if you watch December shows uh, and November's, we talked about amaryllis for uh, 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 winter planters, Christmas planters. And we did up this little houseplant planter with some ferns, syngoniums, philodendrons, and an amaryllis in the center bloomed great you can see we had two big spikes now they are done what do we do with these at this point very simple the only job you're going to do at this time of the year now is you're going to follow these flower stalks down and we're going to cut them off so not a big deal very simple just go down sort of as low as you can cut the flower spikes off kind of neat you'll see that the flower spikes are a tube if they're still really green and fresh this will be full of water uh, so when you cut them you're gonna the water pours out but these are started to produce a bit of seed but they are yellowing so they're not going to do anything for us so into the compost they go we'll take the other one off into the compost they go so what do we do with this now at this time of the year now, we're just going to keep it growing as a house plant. Bright light, keep it watered, fertilized. Once we can put it outside for the summer, the amaryllis is going to want full sun. This planter is not. So we'll take the amaryllis bulb out and either transplant it into its own pot we can put it into a mixed planter um, with full sun things. Uh, or sometimes we'll even just put a row of them in the vegetable garden. That way we got to put them in a place where they're going to get lots of sun. They're going to get well watered. They're going to get well fed. Right up until end of September. At which time we dig them up. Or if they're in a pot, we just stop doing everything for them. Stop watering. Then they're going to go into about a three-month rest. After that three-month rest, what hopefully will happen is we will see a new spike come out. Just like these guys are doing. We've got three of them here. And you can see... The new spikes are just starting to emerge on all three. Uh, this one, it's in there somewhere. There it is. Just coming up between the leaves. You can see the flower bud there. So you can rebloom your amaryllis. Uh, it's really not difficult. Interestingly enough, some of the hybrid ones that you buy in the stores will almost bloom a couple of times a year. Uh, they're so geared to producing flowers. This particular one is one of my favorite plants. Uh, this is a species amaryllis uh, or hippiastrum, which is the correct name. Amaryllis is a common name for these guys. This is hippiastrum papilio. 
and uh, it's quite a spectacular maroon and greenish white uh, flower. It's quite beautiful. Uh, we'll see them blooming. Hopefully, we'll catch them on a show. If not, we'll post them on Instagram when they bloom. Uh, it is one of my favorites and quite a reliable bloomer. And it actually blooms from a much smaller bulb than many amaryllis what, of what we think of. You can see the bulb is not very big and it will produce a blooming size bulb. So that just gives you the bit of incentive that you can do it with your Christmas amaryllis. You can get them to rebloom and you can get them to rebloom year after year. Usually once you get into the right cycle, <laughs> find out what works and then just keep doing it and you can get pots and pots and pots because what's actually really nice is they will send offsets and when you get the big bulb and the offsets are big enough to bloom and you get colonies of flowers in a pot they're very spectacular so worthwhile not pitching your amaryllis give it a shot see if you can get them to rebloom another little project we're going to start today and this is going to be a long term one this is going to go most of the season <laughs> but we want to get them started now. I've always wanted to grow uh, my own ginger. So we're going to grow ginger uh, from store-bought ginger root. So we were shopping a week ago. I know two weeks, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And... Uh, we found a couple of nice pieces of root here. The first one being a nice clump of really fresh ginger. So ginger and all ginger plants that are related to ginger <laughs> grow from rhizomes. If you don't know what I mean by a rhizome, think of a canna lily. They grow the same way. Rhizomes are underground stems that grow horizontally in the ground. <laughs> With a ginger, and like a canna lily for example, everything above ground is just leaves and flowers. What you want is the below ground swollen uh, sort of tuberous rhizomes that they produce because that's where we get the ginger from. So we found a great, good, healthy root. It's been sitting in a plastic bag on our kitchen counter for a couple of weeks. I look at it last night, and look at this. We're already getting some ginger shoots started. So I'm really excited about this. This is going to work really well. So we're not going to take that ginger and just pot it like this. We're going to break it up. So we're going to cut it into sections. We'll probably go a little smaller than that even. That one's got a bit of mush on it, but we might try and save that bud anyway. Yeah, it's a little soft there, but not too bad once you get up there. We're going to break them into good-sized chunks. Because what we're going to do is we're not going to try to grow on this piece of rhizome. What we're going to do... Well, maybe I'll take this one off too so it can lay flat into the... So we've cut them up into pieces. They've all got shoots on them. You can see little buds on these ones here. Some more developed buds on these ones here. We're going to lay them in a tray of soil. So we've just got a thin flat, a couple of inches of soil. We're going to lay them flat on the soil and just sort of press them into the soil. We're not going to bury them. I don't know if we need to turn that, Laura. We're just going to press them into the soil. It can be a little challenging to figure out which way is up and which way is down. Usually the buds will have a little bit of an upward sort of angle to them. So we're just going to take all our pieces and put them in just like this. The other plant we picked up that we're going to do the same thing with is turmeric. That piece is no good. 
You can see the difference between the turmeric and the ginger. Look at how orange that is. But the structure is very similar. Now these don't have as many sort of visible buds on them at the moment. So we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for that they've got lots of little indents. You can see them here. Those are where shoots should grow from. See these little indents here? And there's a few more on there. So we're gonna give these a try. We'll keep on lookout for some other good turmeric if we can find it and start some more. But we're gonna treat it just the same. Again, turmeric is in the ginger family, so it grows from the same sort of swollen, tuberous rhizomes. So we're gonna do just the same with the turmeric. Very, very simple. Right into the tray. Now we could have done a lot more in here, but this is enough for our purposes. So what we're gonna do now is they're just gonna live in this tray. We're gonna water it in. We're gonna put it on our heat table. I'm gonna show you that in a second. And all we wanna do at this point is get these little shoots to produce some roots, produce a little grassy leaf, and then once they've got that stage, we're gonna come back to these in a few weeks and we're gonna cut those new little shoots off, the old rhizomes, and pot them up. That'll be our next stage in a few weeks' time. We're starting them this early because ginger in our climate is gonna be a fairly long season crop. We're gonna be indoors until May and then in late May, we're gonna put them outside in a nice hot spot for the summer because <laughs> uh, they really want as, lot, as much heat as we can give them. Uh, lots of moisture and they're gonna grow like crazy. And this fall, we're gonna be harvesting our own ginger and hopefully our own turmeric for use through the winter and into next year. Nice thing is the rhizomes keep for quite a while once you've got them so like potatoes and things you can keep them over and just keep going back to them as needed jeff a question about the amaryllis yes should the bulb re be removed from the soil at the end of september um yes and no you don't have to these guys live in the pots they're in we just stop watering them and, and i've actually found that when you do sort of these winter flowering bulbs like that, and even some summer flowering bulbs, um, like your dahlias and cannas and stuff, they'll just happily sit in a pot of dry soil and then rehydrate that soil when you want them to start growing. So it's really not a necessity to take them out and, and clean them off, but you certainly can do that. If you're growing them in the ground, and not in a pot, then sure, by all means, take them out of the pot, clean the excess dirt off, put them away for storage that way. But, I, you know, we do it both ways, really, um, and you can have great success both ways. I like to keep them in pots because it's a little bit easier for me to, you know, remember to put them away when I need to put them away. If they're in the ground, they might spend the whole winter there, and then they're garbage. But anyway, that's just me. So back to the gingers. So here we go, we've got them planted. Super easy at this point. We're gonna take them over, we're gonna put them on our heat. So we're gonna take our rhizomes over. Laura's gonna move a little bit. We're gonna come into our heat tent here. So we have set up here um, our heat mat. So what our heat mat does, it's basically just a heating pad for plants. We put trays of cuttings on it and the heat mat keeps the soil about 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer 
than the outside air. So for some things, you don't need it. And we'll talk about that next week. But when I'm rooting cuttings of specially tropical things um, in the greenhouse, I like to have that extra warmth. You can get roots so quickly. This is a two week old cutting. And I'm just gonna show you what kind of root growth. Look at that. And all that root growth is right down right against where the heat mat uh, warms the soil the most. Like a happy little plant. Happy little plant for sure, absolutely. Just loving it. Like the roots on some of these things. These were two week old cuttings. I just, I don't know if they're all gonna look the same, but you know, look at here, look at the roots coming off these things in just two weeks. So the heat mat can be a great tool in uh, starting your cuttings starting some seeds and we'll talk about that next week but it's a great tool for starting tropical things like the gingers so i'm going to leave this tray on the heat mat for now so jeff if somebody wanted a heat mat where could they get one heat mats are widely available uh you can get them uh, i mean even amazon carries them you can get them through hydroponic stores uh, a lot of garden centers will carry them. Then you can get them in different sizes too. You can always find uh, the sort of seed starting kits that give you a heat mat that's 10 by 20 inches. That's one tray. That allows you to put one tray on a heat mat. For most people that might be enough. This heat mat that we have holds four flats on it. Um, and, um, you know, we'll I'm going to get another one too because I need more but it'll hold four flats of seeds or cuttings uh, at a time and keep it just like I say about 10 degrees Fahrenheit above the air temperature so we're going to put our tray of gingers on the heat mat then I'm going to water it in My water's not even turned up. So we'll water it in. We're watering, pretending to water. Then I have an option I can decide. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I can put the humidity tray over them, the lid, and that will keep it quite humid in there. Or I can leave it open to the air. So I think what I'm going to do for about maybe the first week or so, I'm gonna put the humidity cover on and just see if the warmth coupled with high humidity helps or hinders. So I'll check it every day. If I see a bit of mold growing or something, then I'll take it off. But you know, <laughs> The buds that were forming were forming while that piece of ginger was wrapped in a plastic bag. So humidity might be a plus. So I'm gonna try it that way. We'll see if the humidity uh, makes a difference or, or doesn't. So we'll put that lid on there. You get these good humidity trays with vents. You can just open the vents if you need to. Just like that, that lets some of the excess heat out, the excess humidity out. But also, every day, you pick it up, you have a look, see what it's doing. On the heat mat, you need to remember that the heat mats are going to make the soil dry out a little quicker. So you just need to check your seeds and cuttings every day when they're on there. And that's what we'll do with our ginger. All right. As I said, if you look down the heat table here, you'll see there's lots of cuttings and things going on. We're really sort of getting into full production now. I'll walk you down a little bit, seeing as we're right here. We're into our full crop of a whole new bunch of salvias we're gonna be showing very soon. Um, these are our first cuttings that we took. So you can see 
pretty good shape. We'll cut these back. They're going to go up to one size pot bigger. Uh, so they're a nice big chunky plant for spring. We got lots of new varieties coming up along this year that we're going to be putting getting up on the website in the next couple of weeks and you can get pre-orders for. So there's lots to keep an eye on for. We got some really, really cool new stuff for this year. So keep watching. Are there any questions yet for today, Laura? Are we pretty nope, much good for today? for today? All right, we're going to wrap it up. If you want to join us on our summer tours for this year, you got to act fast. We are almost sold out. Um, we've got about maybe three or four seats left on each of our England uh, and Ireland trips. Um, so go to masonhousegardens.com uh, slash garden tours. Have a look. If you're interested, we'd love to have you join us. If you can't join us on that, join me here every Sunday. And we're going to talk about gardening right through the whole year. Uh, we'll see you again next week on Let's Get Growing Facebook Live.